Hi, I'm Mr Parker and this is question 9 on the OCR Core 2 paper from June 2010. For more questions on this exam paper, click the link here. Question 9. A geometric progression has first term A and common ratio R, and the terms are all different. The first, second and fourth terms of the geometric progression form the first three terms of an arithmetic progression. In part 1, it says show that R cubed minus 2R plus 1 equals 0. So over here I've borrowed the formulae from the formula book that are relevant for this question. So what I'm going to start by doing is writing down the first few terms of an arithmetic progression and a geometric progression. So we're told in the question that the geometric progression has first term A, so U1 equals A. And if we wanted to get the second term, we'd use this formula here. So U2 is going to be A multiplied by R to the power of M minus 1. Well, N in this case is 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1. R to the power 1 we just write as R. The third term we would write as A multiplied by R to the 3 minus 1, which is R squared. And we do need the fourth term as well, so U4 equals A R cubed. Now let's think about the arithmetic progression. For the arithmetic progression, we need to compare it to the geometric progression because it says the first, second and fourth terms of the geometric progression form the first three terms of an arithmetic progression. So U1 for this one is going to be the same as U1 for this one, which is A. The second term in the geometric progression, once again, is the same as the second term in the arithmetic progression. So we could say that U2 is going to be AR. To find the third term, it says that the fourth term in the geometric progression is the same as the third term in the arithmetic progression. So U3 in this sequence is AR cubed. So we've got a bit of a link here. It says the first terms are the same. The second terms are the same, but the fourth term in the geometric progression is the same as the third term in the arithmetic progression. Next, I want you to think about how an arithmetic progression works. To get the next term, you add on a common difference. So the difference between each term has to be the same. So if I do U3 subtract U2, that would give me D because D is the difference between the two terms. And that is exactly the same as doing U2 subtract u1. So let's substitute in what we have above. u3 is ar cubed minus ar, because that's u2, equals ar minus a. Because every term has got a in, we can cancel that out and get r cubed minus r equals r minus 1. All I'm doing there really is dividing through by a. To finish off, remember I've got to get this up here. So I'll keep my r cubed, and I'll subtract this r from both sides to get minus 2r on this side and to get rid of it on this side. And I'll also add 1 to get rid of it off here, but on this side I will have plus 1 equals 0. I can be confident I've done it right because the answer I've got here is what I'm asked to show up here. In part 2, it says, given that the geometric progression converges, find the exact value of r. Remember, here is our formula for the nth term of a geometric progression. And if this is not going to go off to infinity, and we've got something to the power of infinity, then the only way that can happen is if r is between 1 and minus 1. Now, we can't have it equal to 1 because it says the terms are all different. And if you have a ratio of 1, that would make all the terms the same. Now, in the previous part, we showed that r cubed minus 2r plus 1 equals 0. So what we're going to do is solve this. Because it's a cubic equation, we could have up to three solutions. But when we apply the conditions that r has got to be between minus 1 and 1, we should hopefully only get one solution. In order to solve a cubic equation, I'm going to use the factor theorem. And to do so, I'm going to say, let f of r equal r cubed minus 2r plus 1. So the factor theorem says, if I substitute in some number n and I get the answer 0, it means that x minus n is a factor of that equation, which will help me to factorise it. 
So I'm looking for a number that I can substitute in for R to get 0. In this case, if we substitute in 1, so we do f of 1, that will be 1 cubed minus 2 lots of 1 plus 1, that gives us 0. Therefore, x minus 1 is a factor. What that allows us to do is say that r cubed minus 2r plus 1 is equal to x minus 1 multiplied by some quadratic factor. And I'm going to call that ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are some constants that I'm going to determine. By expanding out brackets, I get ax cubed. If I think about the x squared terms, I'm going to get x times bx. That will give me bx squared minus 1 times ax squared. So this is going to be b minus ax squared. If you're not comfortable doing that in one step, do it over two lines. You'll get to that eventually. For the x terms, I'm going to have x multiplied by c and then minus 1 multiplied by bx. That would give me c minus bx. And then finally, I get minus 1 times c minus c. Next, I'm going to do something called equating coefficients. And if this side equals this side, then the coefficient of the cubic term on the left must be the same as the coefficient of the cubic term on the right. The coefficient of this one is 1. The coefficient of this one is a. So I can say that a equals 1. The constant on this side must be the same as the constant on this side. So that tells me that c equals minus 1. And then as there is no x squared term over here, that must mean that b minus a equals 0. And because a is 1, you would have to have 1 minus 1 is 0, so b equals 1. Therefore, I can say that r cubed minus 2r plus 1 equals x minus 1 in this bracket. And then in the new bracket, a becomes 1, so that's just x squared. b becomes 1, so that's plus x. And c is minus 1, so minus 1. We also know that r cubed minus 2r plus 1 equals 0, so we can say this equals 0. So the solutions we would get to this equation, we would get one from this bracket which says r equals 1. We'll get two solutions from this. It doesn't factorise, so we'll use the quadratic formula. So we're going to get x equals minus b, so that's minus 1, plus or minus square root of b squared, that's 1 squared, minus 4 times 1 times minus 1. And we'll divide the whole thing by 2a, which is 2 lots of 1, or just 2. So we're going to get minus 1, plus or minus, the square root of, well, 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 1, that just gives me the square root of 5, over 2. However, one of these solutions won't be between minus 1 and 1, so we'll just check that. So if we use the plus, we do get a solution between minus 1 and 1. So that's a valid solution. Let's just check the same thing with a minus in here. And we can see that solution is not valid because that won't converge because that's not between minus 1 and 1. So r equals 1 is not valid. r equals minus 1 minus root 5 over 2 is not valid. But r equals minus 1 plus root 5 over 2 is valid. So that is our final answer. In part 3, it says, given also that the sum to infinity of this geometric progression is 3 plus root 5, find the value of the integer a. In the formula book, we've got the formula for the sum to infinity, and it's a over 1 minus r. And in part 2, we found the value of r. And that was this here. So we also know that s infinity equals 3 plus root 5. So all we have to do for this question is substitute numbers into a formula. So we're going to get 3 plus root 5 equals a divided by 1 minus minus 1 plus root 5 over 2. Now the tricky part in this question is dealing with the denominator of this fraction. The first thing I'm going to do in this denominator is write this as three separate terms, all with two as a denominator in this bottom part. So I'm going to write one as two over two, and then we're going to have minus, and I'm going to write this as two separate fractions, so it's 
minus 1 over 2 and then plus root 5 over 2. So what I'm going to do here is multiply out this bracket as if this is minus 1. Okay, what that's going to do is flip the sign of everything in this bracket. So I get a over 2 over 2, minus minus a half becomes plus 1 half, and minus plus root 5 over 2 is going to give me minus root 5 over 2. So now let's deal with the bottom of this fraction here. Because everything's over 2, I can just write this as 1 fraction over 2. And I'm also going to notice that 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2 would give me 3 over 2. So I'm going to write this as a over 3 minus root 5 over 2. So here we have a triple layered fraction, which really means we've got a fraction within a fraction. And I just want to point out that it's not that part that's a fraction within a fraction. It is this part that is a fraction that's within a whole fraction and that's because of what we had to start with up here. And if we want to deal with a triple layered fraction, so we've got a divided by b over c, which we could rewrite in a similar way as a divided by b over c like that. And to deal with dividing fractions we usually multiply by the reciprocal of a second fraction so we get a times c over b, which is just ac over b. So essentially what we're going to do is multiply the top and the bottom numbers. That means we get 3 plus root 5 equals 2a over 3 minus root 5. We'll multiply both sides by 3 minus root 5. That gives us 3 plus root 5 multiplied by 3 minus root 5 equals 2a. This double bracket expansion here involves a conjugate and that means that the square roots are actually going to disappear. We're going to do 3 times 3 which is 9. For the third part we're going to do root 5 times 3 and then we're going to subtract 3 root 5. That's going to give us 0. And the final part root 5 times minus root 5 gives us negative 5 so we get 9 minus 5 is 2a. 9 minus 5 is 4 divide through by 2 we get a equals 2. That's the end of this paper. I hope you find it useful and thank you for watching.